What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So with Amazon recently updating a couple of their Fire tablets, I thought this would be a great time to go over the entire lineup and compare them all side by side so that you guys can hopefully get an idea of which one of these products is right for you if you're in the market for a new one. Now I do have a separate video already on the channel talking about just the newly updated Fire 7 and Fire 7 Kids Edition tablets. So if you just want to see what's new with those devices since they were the ones that were refreshed a couple of weeks ago. I'll leave a link on screen and down below in the video description for you to check out that video. In this video, we'll be covering every current Fire tablet that Amazon offers right now, from the Fire 7 all the way up to the Fire HD 10. I'll go over all the differences, the similarities, the specs, and the features, and I'm hoping by the end you'll have a good sense of which of these Fire devices might work best for you and your needs. As always, if you're interested in learning more about Amazon's Fire tablets, or if you want to pick one up for yourself, I'll have links to each one down below in the video description as well. So right now, Amazon has three different Fire tablets to choose from. The Fire 7, the Fire HD 8, and the Fire HD 10. The numbers for each of these tablets corresponds to their screen size. So the Fire 7 has a 7-inch display, the HD 8 is an 8-inch tablet, and the HD 10 is a 10-inch device. The screen size isn't the only difference between the tablets though, of course. There are some other features that differentiate them from one another, and I'll go over that in just a minute. In addition to that lineup, Amazon also has a kids variation of each of their tablets as well, and I'll also explain what that version of the tablet is and why that might be a good choice as well. The first one we'll check out here is the most recently updated device on the list, the Fire 7. This is the least expensive tablet, coming in at $49.99 for the 16 gigabyte model, and you can bump that up to 32 gigabytes if you need for $20 more. Like I mentioned earlier, Amazon did refresh this device a couple of weeks ago, doubling the base storage, improving the internal specs, and also launching a few new colors that you can't get with any other tablet in their lineup. They have black, plum, sage, and twilight blue. And these are sort of soft, muted colors that differ greatly from the bright colors still found on the larger devices. The Fire 7 is the smallest, most compact tablet Amazon offers. And for me, it's actually slim enough to hold very comfortably in one hand. Now the form factor for the Fire 7, and actually for every other tablet in the lineup, has remained unchanged for a couple of years now. So you still have that all plastic design that on one sense is fairly tough and rugged, but certainly feels noticeably cheaper when compared to the likes of an all-aluminum iPad, for example. Taking a look around the Fire 7, you'll find one single speaker on the device for listening to your content. The Fire HD 8 and HD 10 tablets actually have dual stereo speakers, so the 7 definitely lacks a bit there. You've got a micro SD slot to expand your storage up to 512 gigabytes, which is great. And there's a headphone jack, micro USB port for charging, microphone, and your volume and power buttons across the top as well. The only other physical hardware items to note are the two megapixel front and rear cameras with 720p HD video recording, and you'll find that across the entire tablet lineup. Physically, the Fire 7 is basically identical to the HD 8 and HD 10, aside from the size. It's the internal specs and screen resolution where you'll really see the biggest differences. The Fire 7 packs a quad-core 1.3 GHz processor, the same as the HD 8, but less powerful than what's in the HD 10, and just 1 GB of RAM, lower than each of the other tablets. You'll also get 7 hours of battery life, which once again is lower than the other devices, and your viewing experience is limited limited to a 1024 by 600 resolution display. Now on paper, these specs make the Fire 7 appear a bit dated and underpowered, even with the recent refresh. But you have to keep in mind the price here. It's a $50 tablet, and at that price, it's more than usable for casual web browsing, streaming, and light apps and games. It's a fairly smooth user experience overall with Amazon's own Android Fire OS that's obviously very heavily focused on their content and services. But if you're already in engulfed in the Amazon ecosystem anyway and want an inexpensive tablet to just consume some content, this is a fairly good device. The screen resolution though is low, especially by today's standards. It's not even 720p, but movies and shows still look fine in my opinion. Again, it's a $50 tablet and you likely won't find much else to compete with it from a well-known company like Amazon. There's certainly more than a few reasons why this continues to be the best-selling tablet in the lineup. It is the most inexpensive media consumption device you can get right now, but if you want something bigger and better, you'll likely want to jump up to something like the Fire HD 8. 
This is Amazon's mid-level device that's slightly bigger, slightly better, and slightly more expensive, coming in at $80 for the base 16 gigabyte model. With that price, you're getting a bigger HD display, better internal specs, and a different color lineup as well. You've got the option to keep things simple with black, but Amazon also offers bright canary yellow, a more subdued marine blue like I have here, and the vibrant punch red. Side by side with the smaller Fire 7 tablet, you can see that the Fire HD 8 is just marginally bigger. It's still a very compact device overall that once again feels great with one-handed use. But aside from the size difference, physically, you aren't gonna see any major upgrades, improvements, improvements or differences from the 7. It's still the same all plastic build that Amazon is pretty well known for. The only thing you'll notice, like I said earlier, is now you get dual stereo Dolby Atmos speakers that are louder and sound better, of course, than the single external speaker on the Fire 7. Everything else, though, is exactly the same, including an expandable SD card slot that allows you to bump up your storage to 400 gigabytes. There's a headphone jack, micro USB port for charging, and all your buttons across across the top once again. The front and rear cameras are the same, 2 megapixel 720p for pictures and video. And the main reasons you might want to pick this tablet up over the 7, of course, are the screen and internal specs. Inside, the Fire HD 8 has the same quad-core 1.3 gigahertz CPU, but 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, a 33% upgrade, and up to 10 hours of battery life versus just 7 on the Fire 7. Those may not seem like drastic improvements, but you'll definitely notice a fast faster, smoother experience with the HD 8 over the 7 in everyday use. You're still not getting cutting edge specs, especially by 2019 standards, but apps will load a bit faster, the UI will be a bit snappier, and overall the HD 8 just packs a bit more for your everyday media consumption. You are still getting that same Amazon themed OS of course, and for viewing your content like the name suggests, you now have an HD display at a resolution of 1280 by 800 Compared to the Fire 7, the Fire HD 8 has a larger, clearer, brighter display that makes content look noticeably better. And again, you've got to keep your expectations in check. It's still basically just a 720p display after all. But on a tablet that costs this little, you're getting a very good experience for casual media consumption. If you aren't ready to make the jump to the biggest and most expensive tablet in the lineup, I think the HD 8 is a great compromise and is easily the best tablet device you can pick up right now for under $100. Bucks. However, if you want the best tablet Amazon currently offers, you'll of course be looking at the Fire HD 10. This is the largest device in the lineup with the best display and best internal specs. And with all that, you're also paying quite a bit more, of course, than the others. The HD 10 retails for $150 for the base 32GB model and $190 for the 64GB. It's still not quite iPad prices, but definitely getting up there for sure. The HD 10 comes in just three colors colors black, marine blue, and punch red, so if you wanted that canary yellow, you'll only be able to find it on the Fire HD 8. Now, while the size jump from the 7 to the HD 8 wasn't so significant, going all the way up to the HD 10 means you're getting a full-size tablet in your hands. This is a full-size device that requires two hands for sure, and while it is still a very portable tablet device, it's a much bigger form factor than the other two in the lineup. Physically though, once again, everything remains nearly the same. You still retain that all plastic housing, so even at that higher price, you aren't getting a better build or different materials. You of course have the same dual stereo Dolby Atmos speakers across the bottom, the same front and rear cameras from the other devices, and the same headphone jack, microphone, and micro USB charging port. Interestingly enough though, with the HD10, Amazon put metal buttons for the power and volume. Not exactly sure why, but that's the only actual physical difference you'll see with this tablet versus the others. What's also pretty interesting is that the largest tablet in the lineup also has the lowest expandable storage capabilities. You still have that micro SD card slot at the side, but storage can be expanded up to just 256 gigabytes. That's compared to 400 gigabytes on the HD8 and 512 gigabytes on the 7. Internally though, you're getting far and away the best specs across the entire lineup. 
just as you would expect. Inside, there's a 1.8 gigahertz quad-core processor and two gigabytes of RAM. However, battery life is the same as the HD8, about 10 hours of use. Part of the reason why the HD10 doesn't get better battery life, even though it might be a bigger and better tablet, has to do with the better specs inside, but also the larger, higher resolution display it packs as well. The Fire HD10 offers a full 1080p HD display at a resolution of 1920 by 1200. It's the largest and sharpest display in the lineup, and if you care at all about how your content looks, this is going to be the tablet for you. Again, it is not going to compete with the likes of an iPad, but this is as good as it gets when it comes to Amazon's Fire tablets, and I think the 1080p display here is great for watching TV shows and movies or reading books. The viewing experience is solid, and the user interface is pretty smooth as well for navigating simple apps and browsing the web. Even with the full-sized, highest-priced tablet, Tablet, you're still subject to Amazon's own Fire OS, but again, if you're a Prime user or otherwise utilize Amazon services, this is the only tablet to get. Across each of these devices, like I said, you're getting the exact same experience as far as the user interface, apps, media consumption, and features. Since these are Amazon's tablets, you're mainly going to find Amazon-related apps and services, including Alexa. You're limited to Amazon's own app store as well, and you have to rely mainly on Amazon's ecosystem, but you can get Netflix, for example, and can obviously browse the web for any other sites and services you use, and install some third-party apps. Now, Amazon also offers a kids edition for each of the tablets they sell, and at first glance, these kids edition tablets seem a little strange, but if you have little ones in your house, they actually might be a better option for you and your family. The kids edition tablets are more expensive, $100 for the 7, $130 for the HD8, and $200 for the HD10, but with that higher price, you're getting a couple different things. First off, the kids edition tablets ship with this oversized, kid-friendly case. It's this sort of foamy, plasticky, thick, colorful housing that's tough enough to handle drops of really any kind. On the Fire 7, the case is also actually a stand as well that allows the tablet to sit upright in a couple different positions, which is kind of nice. Now underneath the puffy case, you'll find that the tablets themselves are actually identical to the regular non-Kids Edition versions. You wouldn't be able to tell them apart, and you can see here that the Fire 7 on the left and Fire 7 Kids Edition on the right are the exact same devices. As far as the internal specs and hardware, everything is identical. But on the software side of things, Amazon offers a number of profile settings, parental controls, and kid-friendly content designed to keep your children entertained, while also limiting them to appropriate kid-friendly sites, apps, and content. The way this works is that you can set up different profiles on the tablet itself that are linked to your Amazon account. You can create an adult account and a child account, and depending on which profile is logged in, the tablet will either be a full-fledged Fire device with Fire OS, or a kid-friendly tablet with only the appropriate pre-selected kid-friendly content. I personally think this is a great feature that Amazon offers, because rather than having to buy two separate devices or worrying about your young children getting into apps or sites that are inappropriate on a full-featured device, you can have them use their profile for the kid content and still use the tablet yourself when the kids are asleep under your own profile. The kids content that Amazon offers is about what you'd expect. Plenty of kid-friendly sites and apps like Disney, Nickelodeon, PBS, and other brands. There are videos, games, and other apps and content you can organize, delete, and add as you see fit. And when the kids profile is logged in, you can't do anything else with a tablet like change the settings, view a full web browser, or install any apps. That is, until you log back into the main Amazon account. So that's great. And if you want to dive a little deeper, you can also adjust even more of the parental controls associated with the kids account, including enabling or disabling other features on the tablet like the camera, setting screen time, viewing device usage and history, and more. While Amazon's standard Fire tablets, I think, are a great value by themselves, the kids edition really might make a lot of sense for you and your family if you're okay with introducing some gadgets to your children. You've got a lot of control over the content they can consume, and the tablets themselves, along with the case are very tough. And for the parents, of course, you're still getting the same Amazon Fire tablets you would have bought anyway. Amazon also offers warranties and replacements with the kids edition tablets as well, so if they do end up destroying them somehow, you can likely get them replaced for free anyway. So there you go, those are all of Amazon's current Fire devices. Like I mentioned, I'll have links to each of their tablets down below if you want to learn more or pick one up for yourself. If you have any questions at all about these tablets or want 
want some more information before purchasing one, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try my best to help out if I can. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what you think of Amazon's Fire tablets in the comments down below. Also, be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.